whether you are ready to fight when a fight breaks out. Uh -huh. Which reminds me, I need to double check what the rules are in this version of the game for initiative because it's different than Iron Claw and it's different than Bleeding Edge, which is different than Dual Duel, which is different than other games. So. Yeah. Yes, it's being stupid. Okay. Okay, I got the table pulled up here. Cool. Why is it doing that? To annoy you? Yes, but, you know. <laughs> I was going to say. Fucking goddamn. Let's try this again. Hopefully, this time. No, never mind. I give up. Ugh. For some bizarre reason, when I link the, uh, I've got when I link the stream onto uh, Twitter, it brings up the, you know, it actually put, sort of injects an image uh, from Stardew Valley. Sorry, starting value from the from the stream, and it's for some reason it's got the pr stream previous stream's title and an image from it from the last time I streamed, yeah. which was. That's a bug, apparently. Um, I was hearing about that when I was watching Noon. Yeah. Because he, uh, he tweeted out that he was streaming a game by, like, Gary Grisby, and it was like, oh, and but uh, some people were getting, like, Castlevania. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And those are two different things. Yeah. Castlevania. Hello, cell phone. Mine's not near my computer, so it ain't me for once. Not mine, because mine turned off. I was muted. Mine's not currently... Mine's plugged in and doing stuff, but it's not ringing, because I'm looking at it right now. Oh, it doesn't have to ring. It's just anytime it uses GSM uh, protocol, it can cause electrical interference of microphones. Uh, yeah, I... Have... I'm going to point out that this thing is... Old, it, it's old. That actually makes it more likely to do that. Because <laughs> that. Well, then <laughs> I'm gonna put it closer to my microphone. I just realized I haven't ever looked at the GM section for this game. Uh, <laughs> that might be a problem. <laughs> yeah. No, not particularly. Um, Where did I save that? Just as a uh, a general note, um, my half niece is sick, and my parents are getting food right now. So I am quote unquote watching her, but she's just like in her room watching TV, and I was just getting her some food. So ideally, there shouldn't be any more interruptions. But if I have to get up suddenly to do something, that'd be why. All right. Gotcha. Uh, okay. And I'm yeah. looking at it, and they're cyber. They're uh. Example critters have, I guess, are more com are uh, there we go. seem to be vaguely more complicated than what I'm doing. That's okay. You don't need to hit the example so much. I know. Um, I'm looking at them, and uh, like, honestly, most of them are about the same. Mm -hmm. Like, like, I, I like to think of the idea of cross-cultural. It's like, what's your ethnicity? What's, what's your ethnicity? Yes. 
<laughs> All right. And what's your ethnicity, spider? Dinosaur. Hey, All when right. you don't have any insiders, right? Uh, no. What's your first goal? My first goal is begin to destabilize the Sigma system out of Sandheim's control. Put into broader, <sighs> simpler terms, be disruptive. <laughs> Mine is to stop a crime from happening. <laughs> you are in the wrong party, buddy. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so I basically, I'm, oh god. Oh, you're the uh, you're the paladin in the party of berserkers and and thieves. <laughs> I was, I was just saying, you also realize. Yeah. You also realize that my uh, my character, is, uh, the robot <laughs> component of my partner, is, is an outlaw. We have two. I think the better question is, when is a crime not happening? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're just, we're just gonna open this right up. All right, roll <laughs> initiative, PVP, go, Jared versus everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Exercise those soap dice, Buster. You're gonna need them. <laughs> oh, <geez>. All right. <laughs> so basically, I'm playing a lawman in the out in the group of outlaws. I'm not an outlaw. Uh, no, I you're just you're part. just a duplicitous authenticity. I think you need to acknowledge that the law exists for you to be outside of it. <laughs> I might be inside of it. It doesn't particularly matter. <laughs> Are we ready? Oh boy. Uh, yes. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Had been Hello. for a while. <laughs> Hello. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what, did they get that? that Hello, audience, this is Jared. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Are we on? Are, are we? No. Are um, we here? I'm... Are we in space? <laughs> Apparently. I'm gonna point out one other thing real quick, guys, uh, folks, just everyone. Um, when you have multiple dice in a skill, one option you could do is rotating, which means yep. you just take half of your dice as successes. Which, yep. Oh, okay. Which is a nice way of just simply saying, "Hey, here's a fast take ten mechanic that works." <laughs> I believe Rafferty, who's in the chat, can confirm we can do that for initiative in case you don't even want to bother uh, failing initiative if you have at least two dice in it that are meaningful. Eh. <laughs> yeah. If you All like right. wacky dice action, then go wacky dice action. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah, it's worth noting that you cannot rote on a contest. Right. All okay. right. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this week we're playing Myriad Song, a role play adventure of 10,000 worlds. Ooh. For those not, who don't know, Myriad Song is a cardinal game. Sanguine uh, come, uh, made it. Uh, actually, Norman Rafferty's in the chat, by the way, Alice. So Rafferty. He's going to probably complain that I'm playing the game wrong. As, you know, <laughs> it's a great people. game. You know, he can complain but... that you're playing it wrong all he wants. I'm going to play it worse. Great game. <laughs> I'm probably going to play it even worse. About <laughs> 60 sci-fi. And 60s prog rock. I yep. love it. So, uh, let's As do character the introductions. That one time, it's a prog rock sci fi adventure in space. Uh, who's going to start with the introduction? Peter. Really? <laughs> As the yeah. usual GM, you get the honors of going first. Okay, sure. Uh, I'm going to be playing. <laughs> Introduce your character, uh, yeah. give you your name. Yeah, 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 I, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be playing Dr. Tyrell Vendar. Uh, he's a humans, uh, human scientist from uh, high-tech world. 
Uh, and his motto is, stand back, I'm going to use science. <laughs> See, I felt that the viewers at home might want something uh, familiar. Start <laughs> of this unfamiliar world. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, what is your starting goal, Peter? Oh, uh, to design and successfully build a, quote, device, end quote. Cool. What that means is open for debate at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good thing. We'll see what comes. <laughs> um, Eric. All right. I am playing Scraver. Scraver is a space dinosaur. Uh, Troodon <laughs> is what they're Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a Troodon um, pack rat from Mad Planet Mad Max. I think I actually came up with the name of, of Maxima Furiosa. That's a pretty good derelict <laughs> planet right there. <laughs> Um, his motto is safety last. <laughs> yeah, it is not at all inspired by Doctor Dinosaur from Atomic Robo. I uh, and I to totally clarify... didn't make a token for you using that character image. Nope, <laughs> no, not at all. I, uh, to clarify for the chat, uh, Eric's character uses what's called scrounge weapons, which is basically he picks up junk, fashions it on the fly into highly dangerous weapons that have a high likelihood of breaking down and hurting people. Um, normally himself, if they really break in glorious fashion. Yeah, Which if it's if it's not as much motto, of a danger to himself something as important others. with a weapon I made. <laughs> yep. yep, if it's not as much of a danger to himself and others, it's not worth using. Exactly. <laughs> uh, who's next? I guess I'll go. I am playing Lynx. She is an aristocratic Rax assassin. And the racks her, are just her. Uh, the her racks current... are spider people. Yep. She has multiple limbs. She's of the bipedal variety, as opposed to the more drider esque uh, variant that is possible. And uh, her motto is "May a cluster of spiders sing thee to thy rest." Her current motto is to destabilize the system that she's in. Her goal. Or goal, excuse me. Yeah. Per, I got a lot per, of per, mottos. Uh, personal goal um, can be a short-term or long-term goal. It's okay. It can be either way. So, Jared? Yeah. Okay. I am also... Um, a, dang it. I'm also a trigger, but Dang it. I've already messed this up. <laughs> What's your character's name? Uh, okay, I am Garvos. I okay. am an aristocratic... Space dinosaur, because I keep forgetting how to pronounce the name. Troodon. Uh, Troodon. Troodon uh, I'm also a vanguard. My motto is no one can hide from the blade of just or the blade of judgment. My goal is to stop a car is to stop a crime from occurring. Okay. okay. That's going to be very entertaining. Yeah. And I think that leaves me last. Yep. I think so. Uh, I'm playing uh, a character by the name of Kadith Rulin. He is a human cross cultural engineer. His motto is, you know, I probably have a way to fix this. Uh, his personality is pragmatic, and his goal is to fix something. But he's also accompanied by his, well, quote unquote, ally, um, a, a synth, paramilit a par par paramilitaristic synth outlaw. Whose designation currently is four or four o four, he also will recognize the term null as his name, um, and his motto is "I have no choice but to run for now." Um, null has no goals because, as an ally, he is a minor character who can't have goals, who can't have certain features and such. Uh, but an actual character dynamics, he's the one that actually does all the fighting. Kada is not a good fighter, to say the least. Um, for for simplicity's sake, on my side, I in combat you will control him. Oh yeah, I'll I'll, I'll control four or four in combat, but you can override anything that he does outside of combat since he technically can be controlled by you as a minor character. Yes. All right. So we start. <clears throat> Hold on. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. 
We start with a coughing fit. Ah, but classic yeah, way to start a game. I'm familiar with this. I remember my first adventure. You meet at a coughing fit. <laughs> when do you have something coming up? Done. Okay. I'm gonna put these chips away before I choke myself on them. Good idea. Yeah, I was coughing too. Got cough drops. Okay. We begin in the Sigma sector, a uh, bit of space owned by a uh, very old space eel named Sanheim. We are uh, opening on just one of its pl uh, planet planetoid at this point that has been basically strip mined entirely. It's home to just junk. And, uh, Her whole party is not there, but, uh, Graver, Scarvos, and Dr. Tyrol. Tyrol? Uh, Tyrol's the first name. It's Dr. Vendar would be his last name. Dr. Vendar. Yep. Uh, you, there's, you are member people in a crowd around one of the, uh, in the, no, uh, around a, uh, a spaceship, as they don't often drop by, especially ones run by, uh, Sandheim. And okay. there's a, uh, a, uh, gruff-looking dude flanked by two robots on the other side, both of them armed with, uh, sem semi-auto carbines, you can see. And he seems to be looking, uh, and he's, um, Shouting. Look at looking for a couple of people. Few people who uh who know how to use some weapons. We gotta we're uh looking to hire a couple people. Any takers. Uh, any takers. I, I will be raising this. my hand for this. You come up here. We're getting you off any takers. Need a couple more people with weapons, knowledge, trying to get off this rock. Get a good job. Come on. Trying to get off this. There's I will actually walk road. forward and say, where the hell are you going? We seem to be having a bit of a disturbance. Uh-huh. And we can't on... Pangea. Pangea, you would know, is a uh, rocky planetoid currently being stripped of all its resources in this sector. And uh, we can't just send in the sense to uh, gun everyone down. So, uh, uh, looking for a bit of uh, plausible deniability, I believe it is called. This guy is just slipping through a billion accents as, uh... <laughs> hey, hey, what's the pay? Come on, what's the pay? Pay, pay, pay. I need to know. <laughs> Money and get off this rock. For the record, this is... This rock has nothing on it, just... You might like it because it's full of junk, but... <laughs> that's basically it. It's got junk and people who want to kill you over it. It's so homey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll pay you, and you get you. You can come back here. I don't care, but we'll, we'll pay you. Kill some people. Get all, some right, all right, all right, fine. As long as there's violence and money and stuff, and more violence and science, all those things must be involved. What? <laughs> <laughs> The odds of there being science involved in this sort of an operation seem to be exceptionally low. No, no, because no, I'm a scientist. On the impact of hypervelocity bits uh, of metal on meat. <laughs> but that's already been studied and dissected. We know what that does. I'm sure there are oh, further boy. variations that we can do. And, and then, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. That's I, good for you. 
sure. If it gets me the hell off this hellhole, I'll sign up. <laughs> I, I imagine so you just you just kind of. There have been a few crashed ships in this sector, and uh, I'm just gonna say, uh, Doctor Vendar was an unfortunate soul. Yep. <laughs> There's a base right here by your own a, tra choice. a transient entity. <laughs> There's literally zero chance I'd be here voluntarily. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, I'll go grab my stuff. Alright, we'll move press it ties. Get your shit and get on the There's no time, you're sort of get, get your shit. shit, get on the ship. Keep yeah, wanting to say boat. It's not a boat. <laughs> it's a ship. It's a space boat, clearly. <laughs> he uh, uh, space like horse. On, this is a very odd song. We get to be ridiculous and silly. <laughs> it's only he a looks... boat if it has oars. He looks at the rest of you, at the rest of the crowd, and goes, yeah. Get out. As a random <laughs> aside, the fact that he's willing to hire me for this sort of operation seems like he's very, it's obvious he's very desperate. He just, he's looking at, uh, at most of the people, and they're very clearly, like, people who haven't seen an explosion ever. I'd and say explosions. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, like science without they're... explosions is boring. <laughs> it's just like he's just like oh. you people disgust me. Mutters <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, I, as I like he turns that. around, you know you. Uh, as he turns around, you'll notice a uh, a magnum uh, stuck in the back of his trousers. Okay. They kind of displayed prominently. Okay. Basically, And he, uh, he goes onto the ship, and uh, the two robots stay outside. The synths don't seem to be uh, right. very talkative. Well, I will go and grab my gear. What's, what gear I was able to salvage from my ship. <laughs> Which is, you know, my starting gear. Uh... Yeah, but I already have my stuff on me. Yeah, I don't carry that around for all the, all, everywhere because it's kind of heavy, and I'm not actually very strong. <laughs> yeah, you've got burden stuff, if I recall. Uh, what? No, my armor is the 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 armor I have is not not at all heavy. Nope, not at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, wait. I might not have the riot shield with me currently, so I have to go get that. <laughs> Scraper returns to the ship with like three trash bags full of junk. <laughs> <laughs> the the synths that seem to be uh flanking the entrance um look at you and it's uh, all very valuable don't touch it i know you want it you can't have it it's mine they uh <laughs> one just one reaches over and slams its hand on the ship with a loud metallic clang and uh the door opens no, no, I've got this myself. No problems. <laughs> I'll help you carry your stuff. That worked? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, my dear sir. You are very welcome. This trip might not be completely worthless after all. <sighs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I gotta stretch and crack my bones. All this heavy lifting GM and... Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, that magnum, yo. Alright, so y'all get on the ship. Yep. It takes off. In about 30 minutes, you're in space. You can uh, see... Various stars and planets and all that shit. Doing whatever planets do. Orbiting. <laughs> As you approach a ver um, an odd site, if you aren't used to this sector, a uh, planetoid pair. That seem to be their, um... Basically, Pangea and Oceana are two, are a twin planet 
that are orbiting a very odd, super dense core that is separate from both of them. So they're effectively they're... moons. Yeah, but oh, they're man. significantly larger than both of the than what they are. Uh, what they're they're like a weird binary system kind of deal. Yeah, but binary that, mic microcosm system. Yeah, because it uh, that super dense thing is is uh, orbiting the of the star of the center of the system. Right, right. No, no they, they are orbiting the the hyper dense mass that's orbiting the star. That makes perfect sense. Totally. Yo, dog. I heard you like orbits. <laughs> Look, it's it's sixty sci-fi. It doesn't have. I, to I agree completely. I'm totally cool with it. I'm on board with They're... it too. I just think it's funny. I'm not yeah, on board. You've... I'm not. I'm not on board with it because I'm not on the ship with them. Probably. <laughs> oh no. Um, as I was about to say, but you, uh, as you all are approaching a space station that is also between them. Uh, you'd guess about an hour away. Travel is weird. Um, Whatever. Sure. When you hear an explosion. That's never a good sign. Oh, geez. Not my fault. Is Alarms my fault? start going off inside the ship. And through a door that n through a door to a uh, storage compartment that no one that no one was using, crashes four uh four oh four crashes out and um comes spilling out as if he were himself a pile of junk. <laughs> what the mine hell? I claim it, it's mine, I could do I could do things with it. <laughs> Stitch, you uh you were behind him, so I guess you can you're here now. Yeah, basically, uh, yeah. So basically, behind uh, the synth in particular, um, which again, Alice will primarily control outside of combat, uh, looks like typically looks like he's better suited up than what a regular guard synth would have. In fact, he looks like he is at least a military spec synth of sorts. However, he is you. If those of you that know anything military would see that there's no clear designation on him, and uh, he looks a bit scruffed up. Um, Real quick, none of you can hear radio, right? Um, no. No, I don't uh, believe so. Yeah, none of you are okay. electrically sensitive, so. Okay. No. Okay, I and then uh, that. Uh, yeah. Mega, uh, your outfit might have radio. Does it have survey? Uh, let me double check. Well, if I'm if I was wearing it at the moment. Yeah. I'm not at the a moment. Anyone, I tend to yeah, keep it in the box where I'm not using it. <laughs> Anyone it does. It does have survey. Yes. Yeah. yeah any any who, outfit that has survey has radio. Yeah. I'm, anyone, not, currently, I'm not currently wearing it though. Uh, All right. Um, Just pointing it out. Behind the synth is a relatively mundane-looking, just human male who is dressed up in uh, or clothes suited for doing engineering and uh, mechanical work, and he's sort of spilling out, coughing up a bit of a storm, like, <clears throat> oh, jeez. Why do you keep on dragging me in these things? I'll walk up to you and... Because I didn't know you were there. Uh, <laughs> I'm clearly saying that to be okay, sir? What? No, listen. I'm fine. I don't need you to, to tell me anything. I just need to make sure that this guy doesn't cause any more trouble with me. And as he points to 404. Okay, what? Oh, combat synth. Lovely. 404 is uh, looking around. Uh, seems to be weighing odds, you think. One of the synth guards comes out from the cockpit and looks. He and 404 kind of stare at each other for a minute. None of you can re can are electrically sensitive, so you have no idea what they're saying. Um, actually, let me double check real quick on my outfit to see if I have. I, I may not be sensitive, but I do have survey on. Oh, I wait. That's for a forest outfit. My outfit does not have survey on it. I don't think. No, it's just repair and sabotage. Nope. Continue. Uh, yeah, and uh, after that, the um, the synth guard goes back in. The door shuts there. Um, alarm. I uh, you uh. Alarms are fixed. There, there was a fire in that closet. It uh, system ship systems have put it out. 
and uh, two things happen. Hmm. One, 404 says, no one moves. No one. Do, do, we're all good. All good. We're all good. I'll go back to reading my technical papers then. All right. And uh, I'm going to go with Eric notices this. Okay. Uh, from the side of the ship where the uh, storage closet is, you notice that there seems to be a light that has now begun blinking that was not blinking before. Um, Does the light have any indication as to what it means? Um, yes. It, uh, is a, it's a sign. It says proximity. Oh, geez, something's approaching the ship. Hey, your light is telling me that there's something coming. I'm gonna give it a hug. Uh, uh, Alice. A murder yeah. hug. Uh, from my standpoint, was there something in the storage closet that we're in that would have been the source of the fire in question that I would have noticed? Uh, uh, and, it was just 404 having just like a small electrical incident occurred and mm -hmm. a small explosion occurred. Mm. Uh, you are an engineer, though. And yeah. are used to repairing these ships, and you notice that uh, it seems to have taken out the proximity alarm for that side of the ship. Right. Oh, just oh. the sound. Right. Uh, this. But the light is on, and it is blinking, which means Jared's right. Something is approaching from that side of the ship. Uh. With, now, did Eric? Did your character uh, say anything about a, a light blinking? Yeah, I pointed at it and I said, "Hey, look! The proximity alarm's going off." Uh that's not good. Just uh, like the engineer just whips. Uh, Am I going to crash land on another forsaken planet somewhere? No, we would we be experiencing uh, reentry if we were crashing on the planet. That means something's coming towards us. Yeah. Take a look oh, at that's so much better. Hey, <laughs> Space hey, pirates. Hey, hey. It doesn't. Hey, it may not crash into us. There's a chance. You uh, going. there isn't anything in the section of the ship you're in to see outside, but uh, the cockpit may or may not be aware. I'm gonna walk up to the cockpit door. <laughs> And knock on it. One of the synths opens it. The pilot seems to just be piloting along. Nothing. Apparently, the on. proximity alarm is flashing on the side of the ship over here. You may want to look into huh? that. What? Proximity alarm is flashing. It looks, uh, uh, he I looks have... to his to the side and. Uh, I'll, I, shouts, when he says, "Oh shit!" Oh shit! <sighs> <laughs> a uh it appears that a uh a metal pod is rocketing toward your ship <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> shoot it shoot it till it's dead and then give me the parts I am checked you don't have any guns <laughs> what kind of trans troop transport doesn't have any guns I... well, why are there no guns everything needs to have guns <laughs> Probably scrap them for money. You're gonna want to brace for impact. Oh, good. He's about to get uh, hairy. And Why? he says, and This is a good time to remind people of the seatbelt rule. Yeah. And a few seconds later, there is a momentous crash as it as this pod tears through an engine, enters a hole, and rends a hole into the room you're in, and vents out a rax. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to ignite my weapons. I don't know if this is an enemy or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Guns out. Alright, so... From can, somewhere under a pile can... of debris, I say something effective. No, I'm good, guys. Everything's fine. <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, you can hear the sound of uh, your air slowly rushing out. I'm going to immediately attempt to jerry rig a way to seal this the hole that this thing's made in whatever fashion I can. Quick, use duct tape. Um, yeah, I, 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 I point at the other uh, troodon. Kill that. Give me the parts. I'm gonna go and fix this. <laughs> All right, you two. Uh, if you're gonna try, uh, this is not a mind. I'm gonna ask uh, Bead and uh, Craft. Um, with your okay, Speed and Craft. Can I uh, invoke uh, my repair die for my outfit? Yeah, yeah. If you have okay. repair stuff, like you, it and the, with, and... Uh, the issue being that um, you have lost an engine. You're pretty sure that isn't going to be fixable. Uh, that, as fine, an immediate guess, based on would. you would know that. I'm not sure the um, Eric right. would, but you do. And uh, so it is. That there is the hope, but uh, it's speed because you're having to do quick. So it's not so much can you think of how to sure. weld metal shut. It's how sure. fast you can. Would either electronics or mechanics be pertinent to this particular task? Mechanics. Okay. Uh, so I am rolling a, in my case, a... Damn, two eights on the 3d8. Nice. I got a a d6. I got another d6 and a d8. D8, and I have another d8 from the outfit, and then a d12. And... Um, three successes, and um, uh, I'm gonna declare. Well, uh, can I declare my favorite use for craft to be performing repairs? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna re-roll that d6. Um, see if I get a result from that. Uh, nope, does not come up as well, but that's gonna be my favorite use for craft. All right, so you two get to work, and you two do think you'll be able to uh. Salvage the atmosphere, though it will leave you all a bit lightheaded for a bit. The pilot seems to be uh, steering you. You are uh, now being steered a bit away off the course of the space station directly to Pangea. And uh, there are now warning lights say um, that basically just say that... Uh, and messages being piped throughout an intercom system saying, a crash is imminent. A crash is imminent. A crash is imminent. This is not how I wanted to explode today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Oh. And uh, when you were, you just kind of fell into a ship that was not supposed, that uh, was not supposed to be where you were. Yeah, I can way, tell. This, is not, this isn't a planet. That, however, is a planet, and uh, I'm not liking that. I'm also, I imagine I'm also probably kind of groggy. If, who the heck are you? Okay, so the pod opens oh. as uh, everyone starts flipping out, and a, uh, a Rax woman that is basically identifiable only by the fact that you know, more than two arms. Sully rises from the uh, from the pod. Notices that you it's not so much a but... rise as you just kind of fall out. It's in the ceiling. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not a fi- climbing on... out. All it's right. Well, in that case, eight. in that case, she will gracefully get down using you know just to the fact that she can climb walls and just hangs down and drops. Uh, As she hits the floor, she'll notice that a lot of people are aiming guns at her. She'll look around, note that this is very much not the place where she was supposed to be, hear the crashing sirens, and just kind of looks for a seat without acknowledging those pointing weapons at her at all. She doesn't draw weapons or anything. It's just like, nope, nope, that's not what I need to worry about right now. Um, it should be er- noted that she says nothing in all of this. 
Uh, Candace points over to uh, Eric. Are you the one that's helping out with the repairs? Yes. Just gonna point out to uh, points to Scraver. He says, "Hey, what's your name?" I'm Scraver. That's obvious. Clearly, it's written. I'm not wearing that shirt today. Uh, got anything useful in those bags of yours? Everything is useful. What do you want it? No, it's mine. So is this ship and this thing. He holds up just a random what, piece of crap. You, do you value your life more than you value your, your bags of stuff? Yes! Then bring them over so we can make sure that this thing's airtight before you make impact. We've got plenty of crap around here. We don't need to use my stuff. Over here. He literally starts pulling paneling off of the, 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 the capsule. I, I smack him against the back of the head. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is better. This is better than what I got in the bag. 404 what? is pointing uh see a coach with some sketch. Um 404 um, has the following guns on him. He has a holdout pistol that which is installed on his forearm, which is actually currently not visible. A semi-auto yeah, pistol, a semi-auto rifle, and a military carbine, which is actually more of a military SMG. Yeah, he's got the uh, carbine out, and he is pointing it at uh, the Rax, who has sat down. He's like, are we good? The Rax just uh, puts on the safety harnesses and prepares for the crash. Says nothing. All right, hold on. I need to flip a coin. <laughs> this is the question of... How on edge is 404 at any given point in time? I, I, I will say that his personality type is um, determined, not desperate. I'm good. But to, all right, you're good. All right. And he uh, puts his thing down. It's like, we better be ready. Yep. I, yep. Yeah. I should point out also, since I neglected to mention it earlier, uh, the Rax is covered entirely from head to toe in basically what amounts to a body a body suit and has a full face helmet. Her face is not visible at all. You can see none of the actual body of this individual. Is, um, however, as four of as four of four has uh is harnesses himself in. He does immediately return to uh, holding the, the military carbine at, at, in your direction. She will look at him and then look forward again. Yep, I'm gonna... Oh. So, you all managed to get the uh, ship air, the uh, ship airtight and then you've... and moments later, you feel the... Uh, Whole the entire ship lurch as you begin to be as you uh, entered the uh, atmosphere of Pangea. Uh, How much do you want to bet we'll burn up on a re-entry? Oh, I do not want to think about that. <laughs> Given the irregular shape of the ship and how much of it is jerry rigged at the moment, uh, I'd say fifty-fifty. I'd give it seventy-two. We're all oh, cowards. We can make it much better than that. I'm not I want to get to like 90, 90, 90, 10. To pull off some heat no. shield. No. No. <laughs> well, if you, no. if you want to go outside and pull the heat shielding off on your own right now, feel free. I won't stop you. This ship is not going to be able to take off ever to land. The important thing is that the heat damage is not getting to this room, which is what the repairs were primarily for. So we should... Uh, shouldn't die. We better not. Shit's gonna suck. Finally got off that planet. <sighs> two crashes in as many weeks. Lovely. Only two. Impressive. Um. Only? Oh. I'm surrounded by lunatics. Idiots. Lovely. Not a moment after you say lovely. Um, 
you uh, feel the massive lurching and crashing and noise grating metal on rock of the ship making landfall. And uh, after about an undetermined amount of time, you all do feel it stop. The safety harnesses, uh, everything works, and uh, the ship is at a stop. And then the, and the door opens. The door to the cockpit opens, and every and they all come out with their guns armed, pulled, all that. And the pilot looks around and goes, "All right, what the fuck's going on?" That's what a the fuck? good question. That pod crashed into this ship, and that rack spilled out of it. He uh, points his magnum at the rack. Says, "Like, who the fuck are you?" Why the fuck do you crash my ship? It's not a happy man. <clears throat> she looks at she looks at she looks at this man. Doesn't even undo the harness. Just kind of sits there and looks in his direction and makes a hand gesture that seems to indicate, you know, apology. I, 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 ma'am, I don't think that was quite an answer for his question. Alice? Right. I'm, I, I'm getting up and I'm taking a look at the pod. Is kind of, from, from looking at the bits that are in your head, do you say anything about the type of, what type of vehicle it is? Basically, it seems to have been a, uh, kind of, essentially, a, uh, cryopod designed to be launched from one planet to another. Uh -huh. As sort of so a many Superman emergency kind of deal. Right. But it sort of moves, on a, it... It moves on a ballistic trajectory and doesn't really change its course on its own or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, kind of... Yeah. Well, um, Captain, I believe what we have here is what we have to call a giant, complete, utter fuck-up. And, uh, well, this pod seems to have been on a ballistic tra trajectory, and the odds of it actually crashing into our ship while we were in there, while we are in that particular spot of space, are what we call nearly infinitesimal. So, uh, just bad luck. No, no, no. Good luck. He says as he pulls out some big, giant, possibly radioactive bit of uh, power coupling. <laughs> it's like, I get to this you go in here. <laughs> you always just decide to pull parts out of random things you find? That fall out of the sky I... next to me? Yes! <laughs> Looking at those trash bags, he doesn't seem to discriminate between what he thinks. So, which is this sort of acted for Gaelic from now on. Sorry. <sighs> right. Still gonna shoot this Rax. Uh, wind. We're about to find combat rules. He does. He uh shoots you. That seems awfully right. hostile. Yeah. He doesn't. Well, <laughs> wait, what? He, uh, he basically he's, he's he's shooting at the Rax just. Without warning, of, well, actually, with without much more warning than what he already gave. All right, um, so uh, here's my question: yeah. Would you consider it out of line for me to undo the harness and then dodge? Uh, I would. I'd like to give phone it... a friend. <laughs> if it... okay, it's not right. Uh, my bad. <laughs> What's well, gonna okay? Basically, how I would how I would do that is, uh, you can I'll let that happen, but uh, it'll kind of uh, be like it'll uh, kind of be like the dodging and hero where it'll it'll eat one of your actions next. Okay, sure. Um, um you want to roll initiative before the trigger is pulled at this point, or uh, the rest of you can. Okay. 
Um, so, init so initiative is speed, mind, plus any bonus dice such as from danger sense. Um, your target number to beat is, in this case, I'm going to guess, um, let's see here. Um, do you want to say that, uh, okay, uh, we're, um, would you say that we were, uh, ready for this fight, Alice, or that we were caught by surprise? Oh, actually, mm -hmm. no, we, we have to be ready for a fight because we knew that the thing, the guy had his gun out and we could see that there was a fight that could have broken out here. Yeah. So we got to roll fours or betters for this. I'm gonna... uh, what's the target number on the evasion, three or four? Um... Evasion is going to be whatever his attack is. Oh, right, right. It's going to be. Yeah, bad. whatever he rolls highest for his attack is. Yeah. yeah. All right. He's so, going to be. Uh, I'm going I'm to just... assume I can't consider myself guarding. No, you didn't have an action to guard. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. Just clarifying. Right. Uh, Kata has rolled zero successes. So. Oh, I forgot to yeah. disable target number. Yeah, ignore that. Uh, but hey, I rolled eight. So Kata has rolled zero successes. You've won. Okay. So for those of you that are rolling initiative, if you get one success at least, you are considered ready, and that means that you can equip a weapon for free. Um, if you have zero successes but you didn't botch, that means you don't, you're not ready. If you have two successes um, or more, you are considered focused. So you can equip a weapon and a focus, which allows you to get a bonus action on your turn or an ability to interrupt someone else's action when it's the enemy's turn. All right. I so. So the weapon I'm going to be pulling out is my um, is that a harmonics blade. Okay. Uh, let's see, you have focus. Uh, Eric has focus. Like Peter, yep. you're just ready. Yeah, I'm just ready. Okay, let me roll four of fours uh, initiative then, uh, which is it, he's better at this than I am because he actually has danger sense, <laughs> which is why he's kind of on edge. He always thinks he's about to go, about to go down. All right. So my highest die was an eight. Uh, Yona? Um, give me one second. I'm, uh, drawing something real quick. Uh, I'm trying to find a, a good indicator for, uh, focus. Uh, no hidden's not good. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, no, 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 I, I, I know what to do. Um, uh, use a, um, blue halo to indicate they have focus. Okay. Um, and when, uh, that basically means, like, when it's your turn, you get to do three actions. We can't do two of the same action at any point. And uh, when it's the enemy's turn as a whole, you can interrupt, blow your focus to interrupt an action with your own. So, uh, uh, Eric, you'll have to do the same thing because Scraver rolled, I think, two numbers that yeah. were higher than four for his initiative. Uh, I didn't factor roll. Yeah. So I have focus, so I couldn't blow that Oops. to. Well, right now, this to, to fight will, but not yet, because technically this action is kind of happening as the onset of the fight. So what will happen then after that point is effectively either we as a side will fight first or they as a side will fight first after this particular action resolves out. Okay. Which side are we on for this? Yeah, that's well, kind of that my question. question. Everyone's pulling weapons. I'm getting shot at. As far as I'm concerned, everyone is preparing to shoot me. <laughs> well, um, well, again, that's technically we're the good guy. Technically, we're the protagonists. In quote, Basically, this is where the... you make you all. This is where we pull um, the magic that is. We are playing a tabletop game, yeah. so you, the rest of the party, is assumedly not gonna like the one who starts the fight. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, with that being said, um, I guess what we need. Oh, uh, you, is... you can you uh, can copy your tokens over to Spaceship Crash, and okay. see my horrible, horrible freehand uh, spaceship. <laughs> nice. <All right>. nice. <laughs> Real horrible there, but you know, okay, I'm so... seeing this spaceship, and I'm thinking you might want to see a doctor about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a dick uh... smoking a joint. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> so, oh. um, <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm here. Well, okay, okay. Uh, okay, Alice. Quick. Alice, yep. I'm gonna explain what this picture is. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this, this is where the the pilot bay was. Mm -hmm. That's a door. That is also the door out. 
this is where I should just flat. That's where the the capsule. That's the capsule crash. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's and what. So that is why I'm standing where I am. Yeah, and I'm where I'm near. Yeah, I was. I was wherever the this, this is was. a very tiny ship. I have to say, yeah, scales a little. Scales for interpretation. You know that. Should we um, shrink all of the tokens to small size for the sake of this combat? Just no. For the sake of scale. Okay. No. This it is a relatively a, tight quarters. Yeah. It is a fact a small ship. Okay, that's fine. Believe me, the odds of when you said the odds of this crashing were bad. I don't think you might. I think you might have overestimated them. I said infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. <laughs> infinitesimal. That is, the odds are so small you can't measure it. It shouldn't uh, be an impossibility, but it wasn't because it's awesome. I do have one question. Okay. I'm using the measure metric, and apparently this point about right here, apparently that's considered ten meters by the measuring tool at the moment. <laughs> from, okay. from the center of my token. That's I mean, crazy. We, I mean, we yeah. could, I mean, well, you just have to adjust the scale for the map. That's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> just going to uh, you know yeah. uh, uh, edit map. Also, I'm pretty sure. Stuff. Also, I'm pretty sure we'll probably go for more vague interpretations of distance than the actual literal one. So, yeah, we'll just go um, back to the map. I just, I'll, I'll edit the map. That's fine. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, still editing it because I just realized. Yeah, there we go. That, that's, that, that's wrong. That's much better. Thank you. That's closer to. That's close enough. All right. All right. So, um, what is happening is uh, the Duergar here. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to go with that's his name, too. Durgar, fine. Great. It's a name. I like it. He's human. Yeah, sure. Why not? Ish. Ish. I guess I wonder where... I guess we need to be positioned where our seats were probably as well, or at least nearby them. Yeah, that's why I kind of, like, just... Uh, I was, I was, I was literally know, standing by the the crashed pod, the, the crashed right. pod that... that uh, All right. Oh, yeah. I was totally scavenging stuff off the pod. Um, well, basically, what ha that initiative is you all getting ready, but, um, and, uh, I guess he get he's gonna shoot, and that we're gonna resolve that attack, and then you all will go. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Shoots. Ah, miss. Yeah. And at that yeah. angle, he almost hits Vendar instead. Well, that wouldn't happen, so... It wouldn't uh, happen, just... but, you know, pew, pew it, and shit. It, the, it, it only happened if you they tied and you used Vendar as cover, effectively. <laughs> I'm, I don't I'm know, not get, talking I, mechanics I, here. I, I, I'm thinking the way my character's luck has been going, it's very, very likely you might have come very close to hitting me. Yeah, exactly. Right. Loud bang, <laughs> his magnum fires off around, and uh, it hey! pours into... It bores into the ship, the back of the ship's hull, and misses everyone and uh, misses you entirely as you uh, pop forward. Okay. Uh, Watch where you're shooting that thing. God damn it. Um, this is gonna be this is gonna be bad. <laughs> this is gonna be really bad because who's uh, next? Uh, four or four is gonna fire immediately as soon as that happens. Yeah, four four will just four four uh, four um four four is uh has already has his carbine ready. Um He and... was already armed and dangerous. Yes. <laughs> um and he is going to um, he is going to immediately shoot at the guy with the magnum. So he's gonna shoot at Druger with his military carbine. Oh oh no, he's gonna aim first, then shoot with the military carbine at him. Okay, he's um, going to try to uh evade out of the way. Okay, uh, time to roll the dice. That is uh, 3d6, 2d8. I will let you roll first. Uh, okay. Eight. Uh, okay, uh, no target number. Wow. Um can't get a favorite deuce. I, I, I don't know. I don't think you can get a favorite deuce. I'd have to check on that, but that's his role. Two fives and three ones. Yes. Favorite deuce. Firing under duplicitous circumstance. 
Yeah. He, uh, I, I... <laughs> he manages to uh, sidestep real quick as uh, your shouts ring out and uh, poke holes through the uh, door behind him. Door wall beside the door. Uh, at that point, four four is then going to guard as well. So I'm just going to uh, let's see if I can find a good. I'm gonna have the red outline. They're incapacitated being guard in this case. All right. So, so uh, all right. Uh, that is as four four's turn. So, yeah. We can just go in kind of any order, right? It's yeah. like it's yeah. a side when, thing. When, when, it's our, when it's our turn, basically, the it can be any order we want, but the typical order tends to be people who are going to be rallying and doing support first, then attackers by who is closest to enemies, and then it just kind of resolves out from there. So yeah, This is basically Fire Emblem turn order rules. Right. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> next, I'm going to go to Jared. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I am actually. Oh, crap! I forgot what the charge roll, the charge roll did. Uh, um, charging the... strike. It allows you to uh, clear up to uh, if, if there's an if there's an enemy within ten meters of you, you may either move your dash or roll your scramble die to attempt to close the distance and then perform a melee attack. Yeah, yeah but you're a troodon, so you get to. Move stupid fast with rushing attack. <laughs> yeah. Get to use your no. your full run if I remember if I'm reading this right. Uh, I would need to read the rules for that particular. What is the gift called? Uh, uh, rushing strike. attack. Run and right. make a fighting attack at the target. End your turn. End your reeling. Let me check. You... I I have charging strike. Yeah, I was looking so, at charging strike earlier. Part yeah. of the attack. You can also rush to clear the target within medium range. They are in medium range. If you move your run distance towards the target, if you end within the fighting range, you can make an attack. Yeah. But you'll be sent reeling. No, that's rush. That that is rushing attack. Targeting charging attack does not send you reeling. Yep. Uh, charging strike is actually a fairly safe option. Right. It basically charging... just combines your move and your attack into one action. Right. The difference between that and rushing attack, rushing attack, because you're using your run speed, which is a really long distance to pull it off, a run automatically sends you reeling. So basically, it does that, but you also get to attack as part of that run. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right, and then I'll... As another reminder, yeah. if you're ever sent reeling for any reason, it, one, ends your turn automatically, and two, unless you are rallied out from reeling at the beginning of the next round, you be you have to blow your first action at the beginning of the, your the next turn, um, resolving reeling to become able to yeah, do action. Basically, that's what happened with me getting the dodge going there as I'm reeling right now. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's it's at the um, so yeah, it's at turn's end that you're sent reeling from it. So that's so that's that's uh that that is uh rushing attack then, right? Yeah. No, that is okay. charging strike because I this is directly copy pasted from the part for. Where charging strike was. Um, I don't I'm looking at charging either. strike right now, and it does not say anything about being really. That I must have gotten the wrong ability. Um, because or, or I, I must have gotten the wrong description on my page. Where, where did, is, the, is, is the gift from you being a Troodon? Or was it one that you picked? Uh, oh, Vanguard okay. has charging strike as okay. one of its gifts. So, so if you're Vanguard, you have charging strike. Charging strike. Yeah. You roll to make the movement, but you don't. Or yeah. You're not sent reeling. With rushing attack, you I, don't roll, but you are sent reeling. Let me just recite this so it's clear. Declare a target within short range, 10 meters, of you. If that target is within your dash distance, you immediately move to close range, 1 meter, and use your fighting attack. If your target is further than your dash, dis dash distance, then roll your scramble die, dice, and move that many meters towards the target. If you get within fighting range, attack. If you don't, then move as far as you rolled and stop. If you're fighting without a map, then roll your... Da -da 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 -da. Charging oh. only works for fighting attacks, not for shooting and other kinds of attacks. Yes, you can charge. use charging strikes with throwing fighting weapons. Okay. So what is your dash in your character sheet? Oh, it's probably going to be four. Crap. What's your speed? What's your body? My speed is eight. What's your body? Uh, my body is also an eight. 
Okay. Um, in, in that case, your dash is a four, which means in order to close the gap to make the attack happen, you're going to need to roll your scramble, which is going to be your speed and your body. Uh, also, okay. what type of weapon do you have? I have my Zen Harmonics Blade out. Okay, let's just find out. Ooh, a and... spooky evil lightsaber of spooky evilness. Yep, and the little bit it's... Instead of a laser, it's a quantum disturbance. Okay. It's strike um, near. It's strike near, so, and near is what, four meters? No, strike is... Uh... That's close. Uh, clo well, close is a, a adjacent. Near is a little bit further away. Oh my hey, what's god! What's the close target is... number I'm heading for this? Yeah. For this so check? if was it? Oh, you said I had to roll my body and speed. speed. Roll your body. Oh, and actually, uh, if your thing has a range of four, then you can just move your dash dice. Yeah. yeah so or, move ah, four, your dash. So move four meters wham. closer and then attack. And that's that's sort of why you need to know your strike and threat ranges for your weapon so that you can. So, uh, move four meters towards the target you want to hit. Okay. Okay, uh, and that should put you in range for the attack. Yep, and now you can make your attack as normal. Yep. Okay, I need to quickly check. And one thing here, I'm gonna just recommend in general here. Um... Okay, let's set our modest blade. Let's hear that is body, mind, and fighting. So, um, check here. What is my fighting at? It's, um, okay, my fight is also a D8. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, sorry, um, okay. Oh, yeah, that is the first combat will be much more awkward than the rest. Well, Which is yes. why it's nice that this is a small combat, so we can get used to the mechanics and the, the pacing of it. So, yeah. Um, so, and and you don't gain any advantages to this attack. It's just the ability to be able to move and attack as a single action is the advantage of charging strike. Okay, I'll, I'm going to need to change that on my sheet because I must have accidentally picked the wrong. Like, no, you have both. You, ha you have rushing. You have rushing attack as well because you're a troodon and they get that for free. What he's saying ah. is he has miscopied one right. with the um, other. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just, I've got it copied already. I'm just going to throw it into the Discord and you can take care of it when, uh, uh, when I'll, I'll, PDF. I'll put it one more thing here, uh, Jared. You yeah. had focus at the beginning of your turn, correct? Yes. I'm going to suggest that your first action was to aim and then do your charging strike. Oh, yes. Yeah. I have better so so I get now you get a bonus d12, right? You get a bonus d12 in your attack roll with that. So, um, just yeah, be mindful of that, and then uh, at that afterwards, you can either guard or do whatever you want with your last action. All right, then I will do that. Okay. So, what's your dice? Okay, your highest result is an eight. He's gonna try to shoot back. Um, I. Should have said that beforehand, I think, but oh no, you don't have to. Yeah, uh, uh I'm saying that's that's what he would have tried to do. Yeah, and he can't possibly succeed. Okay, so in that case, you have one success, uh, Jared, because your eight, your his highest result is a six. You have only one die higher than that, which is an eight. So the Zen Harmonic Blade will be pulled with the damages on that. It's flat. It's a damage flat two warp, and it has warps so that. Additional plus two. And right. This is going to be four damage since he's unharmed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, All it right. does make him vulnerable as a result yes. of him being hit by it. So. Yes, it is vulnerable. So yeah. now he's going to soak, which. Target four, right? Yep. This guy doesn't have a lot of soak die. He uh, isn't in armor or anything. Um, so that gets reduced down it to takes a three. three damage. Right. Um, which, if which I means recall he's... correctly, takes him straight to injured. Yes, he is hurt, injured, and panicked, which means he can't directly attack or rally anyone at the moment. So he's kind of. He's like, out. I have made a bad decision. <laughs> you, uh, swing your, um, horrifying warp of space blade. 
and uh, it crackles, and there's a loud um, bleep. There's a uh, wait. Let me check. Loud, yes, loud um, sizzling in the air as uh, one of his as um, a huge burn comes across one of his uh, arms. Congratulations! You just transposed a bit of a star into his arm for a moment. Yeah, neat. <laughs> Zen harmonic weapons are pretty are pretty great. Eric. Okay. And now so everyone blows up. Have a crazy man <laughs> shooting at us. Well, well, he, he he's shooting at you. Um, yeah. But you all... Oh yeah. So, so my last action would have been a guard action. Yep, that is it fine, which means that you get a bonus D12 on any defenses you roll, including counterattacks. Yep. All right. All right, so we have... Are, are the synth guards doing anything? Not they yet. are... Uh, they look threatening with and seem to be point... Like, they look like they're preparing to aim and fire... All right, well, I guess I will... The nail gun has sweep on it. Yes, it does. Huh. A sweep short on it, right? Uh, yes. Everyone is in short range, so Ten as long as it doesn't break, <laughs> <laughs> then you'll understand why I, I uh, made the nail gun regularly as a scrounge character. Rafferty can attest to this in the chat. The shenanigans I have with my nail guns. Yeah. All right. If you want All to right. get both the synths, you're going to have to move forward a little bit, though. Well, which, which you can do. You have focus, so you could, you could, you could. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You, you can, can move, up. then aim, and then fire. Yes. I will point <laughs> out that aiming will only give you a bonus uh, attack die on the first target you're shooting at, not the subsequent ones. So. Okay. But still, if you want to be ensured that you get at least that first hit off. So right. you can move Let's upwards. Uh, what is your uh, what is your speed and body? My speed and body is what is that? Just so I can figure out what your dash is. Uh, my dash is four. Your dash is four. Okay. okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's as far as you can move. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's hose everybody down. All right. Start with uh, Drogar. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go for the boss. He um. He is reeling as well, just as a note, which means you have a bonus D8 to attack against him. Okay, and I'm going to use Scrounge Overlord, Overload because uh, we're going to make sure this is, this is going to be a mess. That changes the damage from flat to regular, but means you can roll an extra D8 for the die. Die 10, because I also have Scrounge um, Improved Breakdown. Which means this is D10, D10s then. All um, right, so should he be rolling his scrounge dice first, and, or breakdown dice, or whatever it is first, and then following up with the regular roll? That sounds like a good idea. So roll your 2d10 first, and if any of them come up with one, your attack fails automatically. Oops, I fucked up on the entry there. Hold on. Uh, okay. Neither, uh, well, not only did they not fail, but you also got a 10, which may be impossible for him to beat. <laughs> <laughs> and the 3D um, is 5, 6, 8. Okay. So that is for, against Druger. Yes. He is in a bad state. He can't He can't counterattack anyway because, well, All he's he can do is dodge. Yeah. yeah. And, not yeah. and I'm shouting, everyone stop shooting at me! <laughs> <laughs> no one shot wow. at you! Never mind. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, okay. So what might have happened here is that is a <laughs> total been, of that looks like five an overkill to me. <laughs> that, that's five successes. What's the damage on that uh, nail gun? The the nail gun is flat three. No, except, it's now. Um, plus except it's three. not flat right now because I used overload. So it's plus three. Yeah, you five just successes. The dude. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't explain. It's plus three. So you have five successes plus three damage, plus Eight. the fact he's injured and hurt, which makes it ten. Mm. Uh, ten. He can't so possibly he soak it. Uh, how many can he soak total? Three off of it at most? Yeah. That means he's a splatter overkilled. So basically, explain. he explodes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so Eric pulls out 
this. It Giant honestly just, crackling it's a, rifle with big spinny magnets on the barrel because of course they spin. With, <laughs> and it with basically just a box of uh pointy <laughs> metal bits. Yeah, there, there's an ammo box bolted to the top of it, which is rattling around way too much to have actual like bullets or yeah, <laughs> actual it, bullets. It, in it just sound, it sounds like it picked up a box of nails and it's shaking. And then it crackles to life. The magnets spin re around the barrel really fast, and um, uh, pe observe pe a few, a couple of you, uh, specifically Wind's character, will notice that uh, there's like an arc coming from the magnet to the side of the ship, and you're not. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> and it just begins flinging out horrifying metal bits. Into this poor man. He... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You begin, as as more and more fly into his face. You're just like, oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. Um, the synth guards um seem to have. Uh, oh no, they're getting shot too. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. They stop aiming uh, they seem to be visibly stopping aiming as they uh he still can sweep if he wants to <laughs> i'm sweeping yes. um but i will point out alice um are these uh i guess are the robot guards actually shaken by this um because normally uh normally overkilling causes nearby allies of the person who's killed to be panicked yeah, that's what I was gonna. Say. That's what i was double checking right. is panic do they have a, i was just double checking if they had a role for that or not Nope, so they are automatically panicked. They are unless you... both panicked. Uh, uh, the only way you're not panicked is you have particular gifts that make you not get panicked when that happens. <laughs> and that's what Overkill uh, does. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Eric. You have discovered the beauty of your character. <laughs> As, so, uh... Does this mean I make my goal? I killed someone important. <laughs> <laughs> um... As uh, you begin to um, the 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 uh, create the dinosaur scientist begins laughing a lot <laughs> as he, with great effort, begins to turn towards <laughs> one of the guards. All right, uh, Eric. I guess that next next shot. Um, roll your two d ten first. Yep. <laughs> because it may break and then it just doesn't shoot. Which may will be hilarious. Just jams immediately after the first kill. Oh no! Nope. Two, two, two and then it's and then you roll your stats for the attack roll, but without the bonus for aiming anymore. Right. Okay. So the next guard, I'm gonna guess, is the one that's closer to you. Yeah, synth one. Okay. Uh, rolls his glorious dodge, I guess. Nope. That's three. Six, that's a uh, six damage. All right, these guys actually have some fairly decent soak. Uh, or I would kind six of hope is so. something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 those oh my god, this gun is amazing. <laughs> um, that just makes him incapacitated. Uh, or no, I he's gonna blow out. Um, it, it's gonna blow out. Uh, his armor. His cybernetic armor, and mm. so uh, um, you, uh, you you're as you turn the uh, nail gun continues to fling these terrible um, metal bits and, into the walls, and you can see them poking. You can see the sunlight coming through the holes on the other side as it rails into this poor the robot. And begins to just drill through it like a lot, like they're in a line, and the uh, metal metallic plating it seems to use for armor just crumples uh, as it uh, is sent down. Um, you get a, you get another attack, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other sense. You... All right, roll your two d ten or two d ten first. Remember, is your uh, yeah. first uh... is my breakdown. Yep, it may break down. As you keep rolling, no, nope. yeah. <laughs> well, you're too. 
I like how the fact that your character is better at this, be not because you're actually good at shooting things. <laughs> because I'm willing to push this thing to ridiculous levels. <laughs> uh, that's so the Sith has to beat a uh has to beat an eight. Has to beat an eight. Mm -hmm. Uh isn't the the Sith Guard 2 is getting attacked as well because we you continue attacking as long as you yeah, hit enemies. I'm, I'm, I'm questioning the 8. Isn't that part of the breakdown die and the and breakdown, breakdown die is 2d3? Breakdown die, no, breakdown dice is part of the attack. Yeah. Ah, okay. So that's, so that's what, that's the whole thing. Oh. Well, he gets hit by the 8. One success actually, and no, that's actually, 4. Actually, no, 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 my mistake. The 3's, um, shoot, I forget if, what happens with ties there. Um, I'm going to assume it's one success because the top dice doesn't tie. It's only the ones that beat it, unless you tie one die. So it's one success. So it's a four damage attack. Okay. Rafferty will correct me if I'm wrong. And if he does correct me, I'm going to stick with my guns or his gun, the gun that shot things. Oh, oh no. If you dodge ties, you need to find some cover. Yeah. You can't but find cover so they uh, succeed. Okay, so that's um, a kill. Oh, or rather, it's a four-point hit, so he's going to have to break his cybernetic body. Is Well, that's more than four points, rather. Sorry. That is a six-point. This yeah. gun is amazing. Breaking br the cybernetic brain and body to take it down to injured. Okay. Um, and yeah, you, the same thing happens as he spins to the other side and just keeps laughing and shooting and <laughs> laughing and shooting. This is horrifying, but yet amazing at the same time. <laughs> Welcome to Fallout, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think at this moment everyone is just looking completely and totally aghast, except for the Rax, who you can't see her face. Um, speaking of the Rax, it's you you are up. You get one action because of the previous thing. I'm going to guess that the door to the exit is still closed. Yes. Doesn't look like they're going to be doing a whole lot of attacking, so oh. I'm just going to mosey over to the door. They're, they're both panicked and reeling, so they can't attack uh, unless they can reel each other. Yeah, because yeah. the machine, the gearheads of this group patch the hole. <laughs> so unless a new hole has opened in the hull, then I need to use the door. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah. Mm. Ben, basically, I'm asking, if there, are there any holes that have developed as, a, as the situation changed, Yona? There are no new holes large enough for you. <laughs> There's a lot of smaller ones. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> All right. Ugh. I will just uh, kind of cruise on over here and uh, basically look like I'm going to start finagling with the door because I'm going to leave. So after, after, dodging, after literally dodging a bullet, the, uh, the woman just kind of stands and uh, hustles over to the door. Uh, do, 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 do. Hey, I still have her. I still have it, too. Oh, actually, Peter, you want to do action first? No, no, you, you can go. Um, my character is going to cover his ear while the firing goes off, look over to the racks, and uh, he's actually going to try to do a stunt that is, he's going to do a stunt that is Reason, he's going to try to reason with her not to leak yet. Hmm. Um, I need to remember what the dice for reasoning uh, as a stunt. Go ahead and comment rules real quick while I'm. Oh, no, Peter, well, you can go ahead and do your action while I'm looking this up real quick. So, uh, oh, that's all right. Stunt. Sure. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I have my ray gun pistol in hand at this point. <laughs> um, I will, of course, thumb it on and let the the ominous hum fill the room, because of course it does. Ominous hum. Yes. I will note that the ray gun, when you hear the phrase ray gun, 
it is exactly what you were imagining. Oh, that's why, that, that is why it makes an <laughs> ominous humming noise when I power it up. All right. Um, um, all right. I want to, I'm going to walk forward a bit. I'm going to sort of gesture at the two synths and say, look, I think it's probably in your best interest at this point to just put your guns down and just stop all this idiotic shooting and we can just go our separate ways and nobody else has to die. What do you guys say? Um, yeah, that's going to be... All right, I, I just don't think that. Is there okay, something I should so... be rolling at this point, Alice? Um... No, no, there, um, we're going to just... There's a rule for that. We don't need it because they are yeah. very clearly <laughs> giving up here. Generally if speaking, you didn't ask them to. They would have given up on their own. Oh well. They put, the, <coughs> they put their. They have. One's already dropped his gun, and as you look over, uh, you realize that that the arm holding it is just barely attached anymore. Ooh, that seems. Unfortunate. Yeah, it should be noted that uh, attempting to influence the uh, the opposing party with uh, words of some sort, basically presence. Uh, that is generally considered a stunt and would put you reeling under most circumstances. Yeah, um, that's this fine. Is, these are uh, kind of unique and fun. Mm -hmm. You have. Um... I remember Raph telling me that this was that that was a rule in place, so just so that you don't have people spending like off actions just to try and talk everyone down all the time. Right. Basically. Right. In the, uh, my case. Reasoning, this is going to be kind of a weird application of it, but in my case, it's just simply me rolling my mind and negotiation, um, and then you would resist with your mind, will, and negotiation. Um, would my psych psyche apply to that? No, it's mind, will, and negotiation only. Well, I don't have negotiation. Yeah. So I rolled a two and a six on my case. All right, mind and will. I think that's a D6 and a D4. Yep. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. One and one. Okay, so I have one success on you, and basically, uh, normally, that would be... Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is... I can replace certain statuses. I'm going to ask that on your next turn, you just take a focus turn as opposed to actually opening the door. Basically, I'm trying. Uh, basically, it'd be me sort of saying, "Right, you're stalling me." Right, I'm stalling you for a moment. And that's all. Yeah. And that that sends me reeling immediately. Yeah. Uh, state, I'm gonna. I wish I had another. Oh, that's a good one. I don't think we need to worry too much about that right now, given that the, right. this combat's functionally over. But sure. But, she but, but, she as she approaches the door, you call out to her to stick around in it, the way that you do. It also should be noted that this is the first person who has not pointed a gun at you. Yeah, also, I didn't point a gun at her. I want to real quickly. Uh, Sorry, Peter. Gitch's character would know this, and I'm not sure the rest of you have taken the time to notice this. Uh, you don't open the door by being near. You, that door doesn't open from there. <laughs> it opens from inside the cockpit. Yeah, I I wouldn't know that. I was hoping there'd be like you know a pa a panel. <laughs> No, there, there's a panel outside if you know where to look. Yeah. First, they're uh, awfully well hidden. Uh, you. Well, you yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm that, just kind the of the fact that there's, there's no controls or handle, combined with the fact that you're just saying, "Hey, hey, you're safe. Don't worry." She'll just kind of look at uh, Kadif and relax her posture. Mm-hmm. I guess that's all I'm doing for Cadith. He's, yep. he's almost a pacifist. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so well. there's a lot of blood in this ship. <laughs> the synths are heavily damaged, and one just doesn't seem responsive. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to walk up to the cockpit and see if I can find the controls to get the doors open. You can. You also can find a... Uh... I'm trying to think of what how I would describe this. 
basically a uh oh what is it called? actually before i i mean before i open the door is there like a computer terminal of some sort of p up here that has like information like you know a journal or anything like that things i can find out about what the fuck has been going on um that's kind of what i'm trying saying uh you don't even need, need to bring up a computer terminal it's there on a uh what are those boards called that like you can you have a clip metal clip on them and you put paper clipboard. on them? A clipboard? clipboard. <laughs> clipboard with <laughs> a board of, a board of one, kinetic one, one adherence. <laughs> um I will thumb through the papers on it for Yeah, it basically says that there have been that uh there has been a peasant revolt on this planet. Um uh on Pangea, which you uh based on the descriptions and what you know of this area is essentially where you have to have landed because you're not soaked in water. Okay. As far we're as not currently talking. drowning, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And um, they were bringing in some. That they, they were told to bring in some outsiders for to uh, get things under control by almost any means. We're strike breakers. Yeah, we were hired to strike breakers. Yeah. Yeah, bring in out, bring in uh, people who are willing to cross the picket lines. Um, you do find it, you would find it odd be, that uh, a basic that basically um, there's mentions of keeping the facade up and uh, facade. Basically, uh. Uh, what what you can piece together from looking through it is uh, if they're too really foreign. Um, this the peasantry of this place think that uh, the spaceships are just are are like messages from God. Oh, for crying out loud! And they uh, land in the castles and give the the uh, people in charge a uh, word of God in exchange for goods. Oh my god, I'm on a planet that is more backwards than this the junk planet. Uh, at this point, uh, Kate I'm in hell. Folks, just head into the cockpit here. It's like, uh, why do you think question. You did you vocalize your readings? Uh, I did not read any of that out loud, but you do hear me say that, oh my god, this planet is more <laughs> backwards than the junk planet. I'm actually in hell. <laughs> okay, Alrighty. what the heck did you just read? I hand the clipboard uh, back to anybody who's near the door. Uh, Kenneth really takes a look oh. at it, looks it over, like, oh, oh, oh. primitive planet, great. Um, <clears throat> oh, oh, righty then. Four and four. Oh. Why the hell did we even get on this ship there in the first? There is, place? there is a computer terminal if you want to try to find more information. I, I do. Uh, <laughs> and a uh, <laughs> um, the crash a kind of uh broke a few systems. And communications was one of them. Uh, of course it was. Of course it was. Uh. And, uh, but you do find um, some information mostly about uh, that uh, shipments from most of the Pangea, the planet you're on, have been pretty good. Uh, Oceana seems to be doing fine. There's some... Tension on the space border. Uh -huh. And they've been, and, uh, oddly, um, the most, the thing that seems odd oddest to you is, uh, mention the hive. You know of this planet. It, um, it's pr it's kind of well known, uh, in this general space region. It's a planet. Uh, on the opposite side of this galaxy, at all of this sector, at all times, basically, just the orbits have ended up that way. 
Okay. It's a and uh, it's entirely colonized by a, a Lampyr, the bug people, and they seem to have recorded a lot of ships of theirs heading out in a uh, heading out towards a sp- specific area, but haven't had time, haven't had the time and manpower to uh, investigate why they've been uh, heading that direction. Okay. And the, the general space location is uh, on your space computer. There. All right. What is that location then? Um, it's a uh, sector nearby that's mostly been kind of uh, gated off as a uh, sort of a Bermuda Triangle of sorts. But in ah. space, where just a lot of um, ships have gone by and uh, not a lot have made back, and those that do tend to mention um, some sort of uh, it tends to be larger ships, strangeness and uh, fear of piracy. Yar. Well, pirates make more sense than, than bizarre interspatial phenomena making you know ships just disappear. Yeah, and, uh... Space Kraken! Fourth dimensional Space Kraken! Technically <laughs> possible, unlikely, pirates are far more a far more likely explanation. Yeah, uh, they seem to make mention that, uh... Um, it might be a possible, uh... Place full of goods or something. Hmm. But for some bizarre reason, the lamp here are all headed there. Or lots of lamp here are headed there. Yeah. Fascinating. All right. Um, does the ship have any? The ship's computer have any information on anywhere that might be remotely resembling a sp- spaceport that we could to get to get us get me get me at least off this Namorock? <laughs> um, what you can gather between the computers here, uh, the computers on the ship, and the uh, clipboard, any given castle on this planet would be an actual spaceport. Right. And the castles are filled are, are does it seem to indicate the castle are filled with other backwards idiots who believe that these are messages of the gods or are they actually staffed by people from the corporation that's that's like running the planet? It's the corporation. Uh, like the, um one of the if you uh would were to repair the two cents here they could probably uh help you with that. Um speaking about that um uh, I, I'm I'm looking them over to assess their damage right now. Um, they're both uh, gonna need scrubbed down because they're covered in blood. <laughs> uh, the uh one on the right, I'm gonna mark with um. One, uh, he has one. He needs one fix. The other one needs two. That's <laughs> what it will amount to. Right. Uh, the one that's disabled, the red X, with the gray X there. He uh, that one has a it's uh damage to its brain and armor. Um, the other one specifically has damage to its arm, partic- in particularly, and its um right and to armor. But it see he seems to one identify as male because it's rude. They do think it's rude to refer to them as it. <laughs> in oh, yeah. As, That's fine. Yeah. Um, and um, he does seem available for talking. Um, I think he's slightly more cognizant than the other one. Yeah. Was there any money on the grease stain? <laughs> <laughs> he's thumb through his wallet and find uh, <laughs> the one through... thing not damaged. <laughs> thumb through his. Uh... He doesn't have a head. It's just splatter now. But uh, his clothes are good, so it's in blood, but otherwise good. And you can uh, you can thumb through them and find uh, three notes. All right. All right. Um, first thing. That's a sandwich. Uh, first thing. For, first, for those not familiar with the system uh, in the audience, notes are this game's form of general currency. A note is equivalent to one day's of labor. Generally speaking. That's uh, the pay. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. the equivalent. 
Um, Candace is going to then uh, take a look at the synth for a moment, then glance over to the racks and we say to her, like, look, I could tell you don't talk much, but we're kind of stuck here for the time being, and you don't look like someone who was planning on being on this planet. You don't see it, but you can get the impression that she's blinking. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, she makes her way over to uh, the console and is going to thumb through it until she brings up an entry on uh, the the central space station that uh, uh, Sanheim is on, and she's going to point at that. I see. All right. Right. And space butt plug. Gotcha. Wait, I think I have something <laughs> shaped like that. Actually, no, no, actually, this is actually something that's in my inventory. Um, Candace is going to pull out from his things a a thing, a, a, a spiral bound thing of graph paper and a pencil, mm. and he presents it to uh, the racks. And says, it might be easier just to you know write what you want to say on here. She looks you... at you for an uncomfortably long amount of time, and then seems to apprehensively take the pad and pencil. She you needed more. I got she, plenty right. She here. writes down two lines. The first is. You may address me as Lynx. And the second line reads, I am on a mission. That is my destination. I will comment no further at this time. Lovely. All right.